submissions don't work. That's the goal, right? I think if, um, if I can have one thing be true in my jiu-jitsu, then everything else becomes easier. So something I learned early is almost every submission attempt, when failed, results in a guard pass. Okay, if you go for an arm bar from, from closed guard and the person defends and escapes the arm bar, they should pass your guard. Same with the triangle, anything else, right? So understand that all offense costs some defense, right? It's a very simple principle. If I'm offensive in any way, it costs some of my defense. I can't be 100% defensive and, and offer any offense. I can't offer any offense and be 100% defensive. So we're gonna try to exploit that. All right, so um, a funny thing that somebody once said was, um, what is a chicken? Right? What is a chicken? And you can answer that a couple different ways, right? But you can also say that a chicken is an egg's way of making an egg, all right? So it's all about perspective. So if we're in a bad spot, if we can eliminate one part of the equation, the person cannot finish the submission. Right? Every submission is the sum of many parts together. So our goal today, uh, I'm not gonna teach you guys anything. Right? I'm gonna teach you guys how to teach yourself because what's a limit for me is not necessarily a limit for you. And so it's about finding what our limits are and learning how we can break down submissions to either defend or to utilize that submission um, offensively for us. If I can transition from losing to winning as fast as possible, I'm always gonna have an advantage. Does that make sense? So we're gonna do lots of drilling today. So we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna progress from a worst case scenario, being in an arm bar, um, like dead to rights. So you're gonna tap 100 times. And we're gonna add, slowly add defenses and talk about what things we take away from the submission to make them less effective or completely ineffective. May I use you? So if I have an arm bar, the first thing we're gonna do is start off with an arm fully locked. So you'll be on your back. You'll have me in an arm bar. The only defense I can offer is my thumb is going to go to the ground. Here. So, I should notice right away, as I walk my legs towards him, I start to Americana myself. All right? My shoulders like bend that way. So naturally, if I rotate my shoulder to the ceiling and look away from him, my arm gets much looser. We're going to spar live from here. Okay? You will tap over and over and over again. We're gonna go for um, a minute or two, and then we'll switch top bottom, and we'll progress from there. When we go from here, it's going to be, for all intents and purposes, a live roll, okay? The rules are, I cannot defend this arm bar by connecting my hands together. So regardless of how well I establish a structure and a base, my hands cannot link. My hands must be independent. So we say go, ready, go, and tries to finish it, and I try to escape. Right, I'm doing whatever I can do to make the arm bar fail. Easy enough, right? What I do for me is not what you do for you. So it's very important we have two things happen. I trust him completely, right? If he has me dead to right, his obligation is to hold and maintain and my obligation is to tap. When we train this way or any way ever, the rule of my academy is if you get hurt, it's always your fault. It's never his fault. So my job, number one, is to protect myself at all times. Easy enough, right? From anything. If he tries to knee cut past me and he blacks my eye, that's my fault. I should have protected myself. Very important to understand that. Put ownership in your injuries. So I can tap if I'm stuck, and I should tap. I should get stuck. If one thing works, don't do it 20 times. Try the next thing, fail. It's really important we fail when we're at the very extreme of our submissions. Does that make sense? So let's find a partner we trust. Um, the odd man out is the least trustworthy person in the room, so that's awkward. But, <laughs> and then we're gonna drill this, okay? So give it like two minutes, and then we'll switch top bottom, and we'll talk about how we can make it more effective, what worked and what didn't work. Ready? All right, here we go, ready? Perfect, let's go. Raise your hand if you escaped. It's okay. Raise your hand if you got if you tapped. Awesome. You're supposed to fail. Okay. 
The thing, the problem I see with a lot of jiu-jitsu is that we practice defensive, we, we defend arm bars from the best case scenario, right? Like my arms are linked together, I've got a good frame, I'm stacking the person, of course we can escape then, right? We rarely practice escaping when shit gets real. And so it really bothers me when I see high level guys get arm barred in competition and they tap as their arm is extending because they never practice losing that badly. And it's pretty easy to escape. Arm bars don't work very well at all, right? Like arm bars, in my opinion, if I take a, if I have an opponent, no close guard. Yeah, look, this is pretty bad as far as control. So he has upper body, he has lower body, he has hip control, he's using all five of his limbs, including his head, to, to keep me in control, yeah? If he goes to go arm bar, right? If he goes arm bar, yeah, so he lost a little bit of my hips. My hips can move now, all right? I can see a guard pass. It sucks, I'm not gonna give him this, but I'm also not going to think that my match is over here. I know that if I can control the angle of my thumb, I can control the angle of my elbow, and that means he, when he hips into it, he's hipping into a bent arm. So I'm totally fine. If he exits his hip, we talked about the first class of the camp, he wants to get perpendicular to me. This is much harder for me to control the angle of my thumb. All right, it's easier for him to chase it. So if I turn my body, I turn my thumb, now I'm in a good spot, okay? If I can defend this arm bar, and he chases the arm bar, I'm gonna pass his guard. I've already looked past his leg, right? I saw a lot of us accomplishing that, right? It was almost necessary. As you finish your hitchhiker, the guard pass was there, right? So we think about not escaping the entire submission. We think about taking one piece away that makes it work. So the first piece was controlling the angle of my thumb. Many of you lost that battle immediately. We started off with a thumb down, and the first thing you did was put the thumb up in the air, and I saw people grabbing your wrist, okay? So the first thing I wanna do when I get arm barred, if my arm is already straight, is keep my elbow as high as possible, put myself in an Americana position, and I wanna hug my thumb around their hip. So, he's gotten to a good position. I know I'm gonna lose this grip fight. If, if I break the grip, or he breaks the grip, my thumb's gonna hug, and I'm here. So, I'm very tense. I'm not letting him walk out to my thumb. That's gonna buy me a little bit of time. The next thing I look for is understanding the concept that he must have control over my head in order to arm bar me, All right? Every arm bar has to have the head involved. So if I put my head on top of his leg, the arm bar won't work. So I can move, I can, to here. Now he can have the arm, right? So I have pressure, All right? <laughs> he can't arm bar me here. It'll feel like you're gonna die, right? But we find these moments in jujitsu when I know he cannot extend any farther, but I also know that my arm cannot go any farther. We hit this neutral position. That's where I gotta be comfortable, right? He can go, go ahead. Now if he pushes my arm into his armpit, nah, he changes things. But it's, it's challenging there, right? I've, I've already won the positioning. Now I have an option. I can either scramble up into his closed guard and end up being attacked again, or I can move to an offensive position. We talked about going from losing to winning as fast as possible, okay? If I continue out this direction, he loses track of the arm, but where does he go next? Mount, right? I know that. He will always go to mount. I'm gonna expect that. I keep heavy on his leg to avoid mount. I get to here, go to mount. Now I'm offensive. I went from not necessarily losing to winning, but I went from defensive to offensive in one quick motion. From here I can choose to, sweep, uh, to, uh, to sweep or to go to a leg lock or anything else, but now he has to be defensive. A guard pass is a defensive posture, all right? Guard passing has to be defensive because I'm still offensive until he clears the guard. So I've changed positioning and taken a bad spot and made it good. Okay. So in my opinion, he either had me mounted or he had me in his guard to get an arm bar, right? Usually one of those two things happen. That's bad for me either way. I don't wanna give up an arm bar to get offensive, but if he approaches it, I view it as a good thing. Please go for the arm bar. You've moved your entire body to one limb of mine. That gives me my entire body to move around your body, okay? 
So let's play with that. We're gonna start with the same positioning. We're gonna keep control of our wrist first by having a hitchhiker position with our thumb down and be aggressive, all right? It's challenging to pull someone's arm. Okay, my arm right here. If I have this motion here, I'm very strong, okay? If he puts his arm here, me to straighten this, it's really hard for me to do. I can probably accomplish it. But if I do this and he puts his head out, I'm gonna end up trying to fight for this. Meanwhile, he's taking what he wants. Beautiful. Okay, so hitchhiker thumb, super strong. After that, my secondary hand, one last detail. We're often taught to use our palm and make this kind of cobra shoot here, right? This is very weak. This palm up relies on me being able to lift his leg. When I go palm down to my forehead, I'm gonna use a ramp and just comb my hair, right? I'm gonna skate my head over top of his leg to keep your legs heavy. And it comes out very easily. Then I want you to play, uh, play with this pressure. Get to this position, have your opponent arm bar you. He can push, he can push. Yep. Oh no, okay. Yeah, so let's play with that. Easy enough, right? All right, let's try it, ready? You have to fail, right? And you have to be uncomfortable. And you have to be okay being uncomfortable, right? When we first start doing jujitsu, we tap out to everything. Everything sucks. Our bodies are very weak, we're very frail. We get better and better and better, and we realize that we can handle everything and we quite enjoy it, right? So it's disgusting. <laughs> so one thing we learn in gymnastics is what's the difference between a stretch and an injury? Yeah? So our muscles can stretch very far, way farther than we think we can. Right? Theoretically, I can take everybody in this room and push you all the way into the splits. If you relax and your muscles are warm, you'll stretch all the way down. When you fight back is when you pull muscles. Right? So understanding that concept of just relax. Let your arm be limp. Let them play with it over here while I'm manipulating your body and benefiting myself. So I want you distracted. It's kind of like bait. Right? I'm not going to offer it from a neutral position. We're talking about scenarios in which it should happen. Right, he got to a very good spot, and we're not having the match be over. So it's these, these little nuances that make the submissions very painful, but not able to be breaking. It's very similar to Dennis's class. There he is, right? We don't panic when we're in a bad spot. We stay calm, and we think about what components does my partner need to finish this. If I can eliminate one of those components, I can buy myself a little bit of time. Usually, I will stack that with two, three, four components. Then I'll get to a position to where he thinks he has it, but I'm safe, but I'm still in danger. Yeah. I never want to escape all the way to neutral, okay? So much like with like most modern foot locks, if I have my leg in danger and I completely evade, then we re-engage, the person does it again. Okay? If I can get myself just out of danger, I'm in a much better position to re-enter on my own terms and start my own attacks. So this is what we're drilling with. We do this for all submissions, right? We'll start off with one arm completely across the neck or a naked choke, go. You're gonna get tapped out a lot. But you're gonna learn the nuances that make it work or make it not work. We do it with Kimuras, right? Start off with the arm all the way exposed. We start adding little tiny things that are gonna make it better. Having said that, we still are gonna tap out most of the time, and that's okay. It's important we train that end range of our, of, of our limitations, right? We have to train that extreme part of it, or else we're always gonna be tapping earlier than we have to be tapping, okay? So, let's add more components to this, okay? Whenever I see an arm bar approaching, I don't try to stop the arm bar. I try to secure my arm. Okay, so he can position himself, go from mount to an armbar. If I feel like if he's in mount, right, the writing's on the wall, he's gonna go for an armbar. All I care about is getting my hands into this position. 
I'm gonna protect my arm that's endangered with my arm that's free by putting my endangered pinky into my safe armpit before he even does anything at all, okay? This is the first thing I do. From here, I have a couple options, right? Normally I would try to shoulder walk away by driving my inside shoulder down and keep playing this game here, right? But we're gonna talk about what happens when he gets over. Right away, I catch his, no you're right, I catch, here. I catch the back of his leg, his hamstring with the top of my hand. I can't lift him from here, I'm very weak from here, but I'm gonna let him settle into it just like he wants to. I will tell you right now, this position here, this kind of figure four arm lock with my palm to my forehead, I can see between his legs. So pinch. This should feel drastically worse for him than this, pinch. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so much so that when I did jiu-jitsu overtime for Eddie Bravo, we competed and uh, I, I developed this, this, uh, this arm position. And I went out and the guy chose spider web right here first. So I set myself up, you're allowed to defend however you want. I went palm down like this. And the guy said, wait, he can't do that. Because he knew right away it felt way different. I'm never gonna be strong enough to lift his leg off my body. Right, he'll, he'll always win. No matter how I do it, I can't lift. But, drive hard. I can almost always get my head out by using that maneuver. All right, so we call it taking off the sweater. So we have our hands. Here, and I'm gonna take off my sweater by swimming out. My arms go over my head, and I just swim like that. I think it's kind of like taking off the sweater. That's how I always remove my sweaters in America. <laughs> From here, I'm patient, right? If I let him recover my head, the arm's in danger. So if I get lazy here and sit up, push step over my head, I'm out. So the, bound, the, the ground is my friend. My head's heavy, I'm swimming out, I'm pushing. Now he's getting super frustrated, taking the thing. Oh shit, that's the next class, right? <laughs> Around the leg. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. That's pretty fucking cool. So, <laughs> so, hands are like this, not like this. Yeah, so if I, I'm looking to see the ceiling. If I can see the ceiling between your legs, I will escape the armbar every time. I'm here, my, hand, my feet are ready to push, my fingers go to the mat, I take my sweater off, <laughs> and I swim out. Yeah, I guess I'm naked. So, one more time. He's in mount, I know I'm in danger. He cuts the angle, I'm ready here. I'm already digging this hand. So when he steps, I'm already landed. I can already see the ceiling. I'm looking at the lights. All right, he's pulling. He can, I'm pretty strong here. I'm not gonna wait though. Yeah, that, that's not good. So instead of lifting his leg, my sweater comes off and I block the outside hip. Now we're ready to go. Back has to surf the whole time on the mat. Never sit up. Cool. Let's do that one. Ready? Like everything else, it's full of nuance, right? Um, the problem is, or the good thing is, could be this is how you how you perceive it. Uh, my details and my body is not your body, right? So what feels like a hand for me might not feel like a hand for you. Meaning, I have little tiny fingers all over my body, and I'm trying to feel everything, right? So I have lumps in my back that are, you know, I have muscles, I have lumps, I have shoulder blades, I have hips. If I can learn how to bite people with all of that, I can walk, I can rock climb their bodies. Okay, and so it's really important I, I feel this out and it's important that I work it. And I should fail and don't be afraid to fail. Let your arm go straight and tap out. Don't get hurt, just keep tapping out. It's okay, do it again. Let's see how it feels, All right? So one of the things that's nuanced for me is I'm able to flex my shoulders to the mat and wiggle my arms down, okay? So if my arms are going straight, if I'm alone, I'll show you and I'm here, I have a narrow hallway to fit my head through. Now I wanna drop my shoulders over the top of their leg. So when I wiggle out, I'm driving everything down 
and their leg becomes the shape of my arms. I'm constantly thinking about this like cement like roller, right? I want to roll over their thigh as heavy as I possibly can. If I keep my head to the mat really heavy, it's pretty hard to pick my head up, right? So even if I had somebody over top of me, I'm just picking my head up. I can drop my, the weight of my head really heavy by just pushing the crown of my head to the mat, right? Like you could probably pick my feet off the ground and my body would stay totally straight. You know, and I would just like this big, like metronome. We should try that. Um, I wanna try that now. <laughs> so it's important to be rigid when it's time to be rigid and be fluid when it's time to be fluid, right? So again, he's in mount. I know that I fucked up, right? Again, I'm not offering him this. If at all possible, I avoid the arm bar by just shoulder walking and flexing my lats, all right? I just drive myself down. He cuts the angle. That stops it every time. All right, I'm just walking myself away. I'm pushing him down my hips. But he sits, in his, my, so the rule for uh, Wednesday's class was put your nuts in his armpit, All right? If he can get his nuts in my armpit, oh, I'm, I'm in trouble. Now I'm looking immediately. I'm not gonna try to run away at this point. I'm gonna let him have it. I'm gonna let him have it on my terms. I get to my figure four, my pinky's hidden in my safe arms. My hands go to my forehead. I'm gonna receive his leg on the back of my hand. And I'm already looking for it. So I was mounted, and I was mounted with an angle. Pretty bad. This is significantly better than being mounted with an angle. All right? Mounted with an angle, he has several options. From here, his options are reduced. Furthermore, he's aggressively intent on finishing the arm bar. It is ridiculously, dangerously difficult to let go of a submission that you almost have. Right? Our minds don't allow us to do it. Just like passing like a bad guard pass. If I'm 80% 80 of the way through your guard and it's bad, I'm trying really hard to make it good. It's pretty hard to go back to neutral and go again. So I exploit that. Once I have his hand, or once I have his leg over, I'm gonna try and get my triceps on his shin and on his quad. Now I can swim out. Now I keep looking here. I don't have to look at him. I know where he is. But if I look at him, my head's gonna raise. Yeah? Everything bad happens when my head comes off the mat. Your head should be glued to the mat, and you should be running away like a fucking idiot. All right. <laughs> now I'm good. Yes? If I escape my hips from his hips, he'll win. If I escape my torso from his torso, I'll win. All right? So meaning. So I'm going to get here. Just like that. I walk my torso, or sorry, walk my hips away from him to escape, the mount is easier. The triangles are easier, everything's easier. Keep your hips connected and walk your head away. All right? Now everything is much easier. A person is much easier to submit when they're confident. All right? They're very confident on getting a submission. That means they're weak, they're vulnerable. They're so focused on the prize that they're not thinking about what's happening around them. So try to exploit that. Let's find a new partner, one we don't trust as much. <laughs> and we're gonna spar this live, okay? So we're gonna do uh, basically an EBI overtime round. I want you to start off in spider web with our corrected posture. So we'll start off like this. Here. He can cross his legs if he wants, whatever he wants. I'm gonna say, are you ready? You'll see, am I ready? Yes, and go. We're gonna spar it. I'm gonna see what happens, all right? It might not work, it might fail, and that's okay too. So, play with it. Allow it to fail, allow the person to arm bar you. Don't allow it, but it can happen. But go hard, all right? 100% effort, top and bottom. Every class is two classes if you learn top and bottom at the same time. Yeah, if you're learning a guard pass, you should be learning how to, how to defend that guard pass. You get two for ones that way. You get a black belt in like two years, it's easy. <laughs> okay, let's try it, let's fire it, ready? What we did today is not unique to arm bars, right? We practice all of our submissions this way. Start off at the very end of it, where you're gonna have a high failure rate, and then progressively add a defense until you have a high success rate. So we structure this in our classes probably twice a month, where we'll do 
three two minute rounds with, uh, with the new partner every time. So I'll go defending with the partner, with the partner, with the partner, and then we add a defense to it. Three more. And they're very fast classes, they're very high, you know, high pace and high, high intensity. Um, and it's just reps, 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 right? So, Prit is like European famous. He does all this, you know, awesome defensive jiu jitsu. Um, it's similar, but, but the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So, um, some guys want to defend so much so that you can't even begin a submission, right? I find that difficult to create jiu jitsu from. It's easy to not get submitted. Right? At the end of the day, if I stand up in your guard and I walk out of the room, you can't submit me. It's very <laughs> defensive. Right? If you try to do jiu-jitsu against a person who does not want to do jiu-jitsu, it's very challenging. It really is. Right? So if you have like an, like an MMA fight and you're a white belt fighting a black belt in jiu-jitsu, I'm not trying to teach you how to beat a black belt or, or how to be a black belt in a six-week camp. I teach you simple rules to not get submitted. Right? It's pretty easy to not lose in jiu-jitsu. The issue is we get loose when we start playing these games, right? Which is fun. So every submission can be drilled the same way. This uh, one thing I want to talk about is this can look the same top or bottom. So if we have an armbar from guard, and I know I'm losing, I have to be intelligent enough to skip the steps. Okay? So we have this multi-step platform. If I can go from one to five, I can cut the corner a little bit and be ahead of him, right? I, I took a side street, and now I'm ahead of the guy. So. I'm fucked up, he has it, right away I'm here. Right, I know I'm already here. This is good for me. I know what's happening next. The arm's coming over my leg, yeah. Now I have what I need. I can come back in, or I can escape however I want to escape. But I'm gonna catch my positioning before it's time for it. Always catch it early. All right, I'm gonna concede the arm. All right, so I wanna concede the arm to focus on what my body's doing. Mm -hmm. And then I can get ahead of the game a little bit instead of playing what he wants me to play, right? If you roll with me this week, um, I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like I'm doing a different sport, right? Like you're playing volleyball and I'm playing baseball. I'm just knocking the fucking baseball out of the park. And you're like, we can't volley this thing. So it's a whole different sport we're playing. We just got to play things differently. It, feels, it should feel awkward. It should feel very frustrating because the guy is getting so close to a submission, but he can't finish it because we took away the one principle that makes it work. It's important we train outside of the box. We try things that aren't necessarily how we're supposed to do it, right? We learn a step-by-step -step process. We do it over and over and over again. We live roll it and it fails, right? Play with failure. Utilize the failure, right? And play with your brain. Think outside the box. So the next class is gonna be inverting into the legs. So I have this fun little challenge I do with a lot of my people when I do seminars. And so I'm gonna do a, this is like not armbar defense at all, but it's fucking fun and no one can do it. So, um, you'll all fail, and I love that. <laughs> you will not learn anything today. So, we're gonna go from cross ashi, the saddle, insights, and kaku, whatever you wanna call it, to the back, all right? In one motion, or in like one flow, I'm gonna show it twice and twice only. You have two tries to learn it, and I'm gonna challenge you guys to replicate it. Yeah, it's really simple, but it's kind of a mind fucker. Yeah, yeah. So we have the saddle. <laughs> Ah, uh, keep going. So we can face the camera. All right. Everyone knows this position, right? Everyone should because the class next may involve it. Maybe. 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 All right. Leg over. Inside triangle. I'm gonna roll you back to your back. To the back. All right. One more time. And that's it. Then you're on your own. Saddle. Go same. One. Three scoots, and then, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I roll under, I leg pommel, take the back. That's twice, everyone try it. Ready. <laughs> All right, if you accomplish the task, raise your hand. If you fucked it up at least once, raise your hand. <laughs> Fuck yeah. The whole theme of the thing is mess up, right? Do things wrong, right? If you start practicing only to win, you're gonna lose very easily when you're put in a bad spot. 
Right, we see this all the time with like big guys. Big guys are like a, they're the easiest culprit because they smash everybody in the gym, then they go compete and they get a guy who's equally as big, and then they fall down, and then they tap out to just being in cross sides bottom. It happens all the time, like ultra heavy. Or they just tap out because like, oh, I can't win, I'm stuck here, right? Practice losing, practice losing constantly, right? So my academy, um, for the first year and a half I was in Arizona, we had um, only white belts, only homegrown white belts. So guys who started training with me for three, four months, right? I went eight months without rolling with anyone better than a white belt. And then I had to compete. And I had to go compete against like the best in the world. And I'm able to do well, right? So you can train with anybody if you train this way. Allow people to work, right? Don't be a dick about it and just like give them stuff. Make them work for it, but allow them, if they do things correctly, allow them to be successful to a certain threshold, right? I will always give you 80% of what you want. So if you roll with me, if you grab my hand, you can have it, right? If you wanna get a knee cut, you can have it. You can have anything you want until it hits my parameters for what my limitation is, then I take it back. But I will always allow you to work, right? I do this not because I wanna fight that way professionally, but because I wanna train that way. Because if I, if I cannot stop a guy from doing that first 80%, I'm gonna train what happens when it happens, right? So we have to practice losing and practice bad positioning and then understand the arm bar perfectly. Not from an offensive position, but from a defensive position. And we rarely do that in the gym, right? If we train arm bar defense, it usually is a pretty good positioning. We never start from fucked. And so it's important to start from, right? Get to the bottom, work your way up with all submissions. Do you have any questions? Yeah? Many. Many? Good. You should have you should be less aware of jujitsu now than you were an hour ago. <laughs> jujitsu is um, the Dunning Kruger effect in, in full force. Right? It's, it's the the more you know about something, the more you realize the less you know. So when you're a blue belt, you're like, fuck yeah, I know all this. Alright? I've got it down. And you get your black belt and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right? The, the, the universe gets so much bigger. And so ask ask the questions and play with things and don't forget that. You may have started jujitsu for self-defense, but I can promise you you're here now because it's fun. Make it fun. Don't follow the rules. Don't think about points when you're having fun. Just play. Play jujitsu. And I promise you'll have more fun and you'll get better with it. So thank you guys for your time. Hopefully that was not horrible. Um, ask me questions. I'm here. I'm by leave. So yeah, I'm here tonight. <laughs> so you fuck off all week and didn't ask me questions then. Let's get a picture, guys. You guys don't mind? Um, where would you like it?